What's going on guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I'm going to show you how you can use AI to make a game. It doesn't matter if you have experience with AI, coding, 3D software, or any of that. If you do, it's going to help you out, but it's not necessary for this video. You can follow along and we're going to make a game. So let's get into it. Now we are going to need three things. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a computer or a laptop. We're going to need Unity which is free and we can download that from the internet and we're also going to need a coding program called Visual Studio and like I said you don't need any experience with coding the AI is going to make all our code and I'll show you how that's going to be done later so let's get into the video alright so the very first thing we're going to do is open up our internet browser and we're going to search for unity.com so this will take us to the Unity page right here, so we can go ahead and click download. Now I already have Unity downloaded, so I'm not going to download it again. So what we'll do is go up to plans and pricing, and this is going to be free, so you're going to want to select the Unity personal right here, so you can go ahead and follow the prompts to download that. I'm using Unity 6. I'm not going to download Unity because I already have it downloaded, but you should de definitely get the latest version, which I believe right now is Unity 6. So when you click download, it'll give you this little Unity hub set up here, so you're going to want to go ahead and follow the prompts to get this installed on your computer or laptop. And this should give you the option to install Visual Studio as well, but if it doesn't give you that option or if you accidentally uncheck it when installing, you can go on the internet right here and just type in Visual Studio. And we can go ahead and make sure you click Visual Studio, the IDE, not Visual Studio Code. Um, there are two different things. For this, we just want Visual Studio right here. So we can go ahead and click Download Visual Studio. And you can click Downloads at the top, and you want to make sure you get Visual Studio 2022. So now that we have Unity installed and Visual Studio installed, the last thing we need to do is just go to our internet browser and open up ChatGPT. So I'm going to search ChatGPT here and hit enter. Okay, so now I'm here in ChatGPT. ChatGPT is free. I'm using the paid version. I think it's like 20 or 21 bucks a month or something like that. But you can definitely follow along with this video using the free version. Now keep in mind that the prompts and the things that I put in ChatGPT, you might not get the same results even if you copy them. But feel free to copy my prompts. Or you could create your own prompts and follow along with this tutorial that way. If you want to follow exactly along with what I'm doing, you can copy the code and some of the things that ChatGPT generates that we'll use in the game and I'll make sure to provide all that as we go through the tutorial. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type out my prompt. Okay, so to save some time, I've typed out my prompt ahead of time here, so we're going to go ahead and read over this. Um, but before we do, I just want to say that when you uh, use this workflow in ChatGPT, when you're starting off with your first prompt, you should be as descriptive as possible and try to think of as much information every basically everything that you want to put in it just off the bat uh, you're gonna need to refine this as you'll see as we go but yeah just try and give it as much information as possible off the bat especially for making a game so for my prompt here I, I said I want to make a game in unity it'll be a simple 2d game with the player being a cube the player will be positioned at the bottom of the screen the player will be able to move left and right we can make an effect so that if the player moves out of view from the camera on the left he appears on the right side and vice versa. From the top of the screen random objects will fall. These can be circles. There will be 10 rounds with the first round lasting for 30 seconds and each round increasing by 30 seconds. Round 2, 60 seconds, round 3, 90 seconds, etc. The player must survive the round where am I here? The player must survive the round to move to the next round. Each round will increase in difficulty. If the player is hit three times within a round by a falling object, he dies. If the player dies, the game is over. We will need a UI for the timer, player health, and score. Each round the player survives, he gets 500 points. We'll also need to create a pause, restart, and exit menu. If the player dies, it should say game over. If the player dies, it should say game over. And when the player wins, it should say congratulations, you won. At the beginning of each round, text should appear with the name of the round, round 1, round 2, etc. Please give me step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this game in Unity and provide me with the codes for the game. Thanks. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and send this and see what it, what it gives me. So it says, that sounds like a fun and simple game to build. Below, I'll break down the development process step by step and provide the necessary C-sharp scripts for your 2D cube dodge survival game. So step one, set up the Unity project. So open Unity and create a 2D project, blah, blah, blah. So step two is to create the player. So we'll right click, it's gonna tell us how to create the player. It's giving us a player controller code. Create some falling objects. Looks like we've got some falling objects code. Uh, falling object spawner, game manager. So it looks like it's giving us a lot of the stuff we need. It's going to tell us how to set up the UI. 
and it's giving us some more code here. So the final notes are you can add background music and sound effects for more polish, improve UI visuals for a better experience, add animations to the player and objects. So what we'll do is we're going to go all the way back up to the top here and we're going to start with step one, just setting up our Unity project and work our way down. Okay, so I'm going to minimize ChatGPT and as we're going to work on step one here. So the first one is opening Unity and creating a 2D project and saving that. So what you want to do is go to Unity Hub, which you should have this installed on your computer. And we'll go ahead and open up the Unity Hub. So I'm going to go ahead and click New Project. And we want to go ahead and select Universal 2D Core. So over here you can go ahead and choose where you'd like to save your uh, project. So I'm going to go ahead and save mine in a specific folder. And up at the top we can give our project a unique name. So I'm going to name it AI Game Tutorial. And if you have an organization or something you want to put here, you can add that. So I've got Purple Park Studios added as an organization. And now that we have our Universal 2D Core selected, our project named, and location saved, we're going to go ahead and hit Create Project. So it's going to take a few minutes and Unity is going to load up and it's going to basically get everything ready within the program so that we can build our game. Alright, so once Unity is done loading, uh, this is what we'll get. This is Unity right here. So don't be too overwhelmed by all of this right now because we're basically, we're just going to be following the steps that ChatGPT is giving us and then I'll be able to help uh, with some other things throughout this tutorial as well. So don't be overwhelmed. Um, we'll learn about the interface of Unity as we go. And that's uh, what's really nice about using ChatGPT is because you can kind of learn Unity as you go. So don't be overwhelmed. So let's just go back into ChatGPT right here and we can see that step one is complete. We've opened Unity, created a 2D project, we've created a new scene, and the game resolution should already be set to 1080 by 1920. So um, we can go up here to game. It's actually at a 16.9 aspect ratio, so you could leave it there if you wanted to, or you could change it to full HD. We'll just leave it at 1920 by 1080, that works. And then, so here we can toggle between our 2D view where we can, this is kind of like the creation mode, and then this is the actual game mode, what the camera's seeing. So right now it's just a blue background, we'll change that later. So let's go back to ChatGPT and we're going to work on step two. So we're getting right down to it here, we're going to create the player, that's the very next thing we're going to do. So we're going to right click in our hierarchy, add a 2D object, sprite, square, and rename it player. <laughs> so don't be overwhelmed. This right here, if we go back into Unity, this is our hierarchy, and essentially this is where we can add elements in, into our game, essentially. So we're going to right click, create, em or not create empty. So we're going to right click, we'll go down to 2D object, sprite, and we're going to go over here to square. So I'm going to select square, and we can see that a square has appeared in the center of our camera, and that's good. And up here we'll get the option to rename it. If you accidentally clicked out of it, you can just right click on it, rename, and we'll name this to player. All right, so now we've created our player. I'm gonna go ahead and hit file, save. Unity's really good at like never, I don't think Unity's ever crashed on me. It's not known for crashing, it's an amazing program, but it's still good to just save your progress every now and then. So the next thing we need to do is set the position. So it's telling us to set the position to 0, minus 4, 0, so that it starts at the bottom of the screen. So we'll go over and we'll select our player object. And you notice that when I selected my player object, a bunch of stuff popped up over here. So over here is the hierarchy where we can add elements. And then if we click on an element, we get what's called the inspector. So basically the inspector just shows a bunch of things that we can do to customize our object. That's one way you can think about it. So we selected our player and all this stuff pops up. So we can go ahead and uh, set this to zero on the X and it's zero on the Z and the Y one it wanted us to set to minus four so we'll do minus four and that puts our cube at the bottom of the screen and that's exactly what we want. So going back into ChatGPT, the third step of step two is to add a rigid body 2D component and set the gravity scale to zero. So we'll go back into Unity, and with our player object selected, we'll go over to the inspector. So we're going to add a new element to our player object. So we're going to select Add Component, 
and we can search in the top here for rigid body. We're going to select rigid body 2D and you can see a bunch of stuff popped up here. We don't need to worry about this. All we need to do is find the gravity scale and right now it's set to 1. We just want to change that to 0. So we'll go back over to ChatGPT here. It now wants us to add a box collider 2D component. So we'll go back into Unity with our player object selected. We'll go back to our inspector and scroll down and we're going to add a new component. So we're going to type box in the little search bar and you'll see this box collider 2D. So we'll go ahead and select the box collider. Now I want to quick explain something about the box collider. So if I go back to my scene view here, you'll see you can't really see the box collider right now. Um, but if I change the size down here, you'll see that it's expanding this way and this way. So this is essentially going to work with the rigid body to tell Unity when these other objects that we're going to create collide with the player. So you can get really advanced with this stuff, but I just want you to know that this is here um, and it has a lot of uses. So I'm going to control Z that because I want it to be perfectly mapped to my cube. So right now, by default, it's perfectly mapped to my cube or square. And that's exactly what we want. But I just want to make you aware that you can adjust the settings of the box collider. So we're going to go back into ChatGPT and it says to create a new C -sharp script called player controller and attach it to the player. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code here. If you're using my exact same code, you can pause the video and copy and then I'll scroll down so you can, well, you should be able to get it all there. So using Unity Engine and then just copy that, copy this right here. So once you've got that copied, I'll make sure I copy that again. We'll go back into Unity. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the bottom to our assets folder. And I, with the assets folder selected, I'm going to right click, create a new folder. And we're going to name this new folder scripts. And this is where we're going to keep all of our code. So we'll select this folder here and then we'll right click. We'll go create and we're going to go to scripting, empty C sharp script. I'll select that. And now I can rename this to player controller. And it's very important to name it exactly the way it is here. So with the capital P and the capital C, that's very important. You don't need to do this dot CS. That'll be attached automatically. That's just for the C sharp script. But you do want to have it say player controller with the capital P and capital C. So if I go back into Unity, I can double click my player controller script and it's going to automatically open up Visual Studio for us. Now you probably have Visual Studio 2022, I'm using 2019, but you should definitely make sure you have the latest updated version. I haven't updated mine yet, but it'll be fine for this video. So here we are inside Visual Studio and don't be overwhelmed. All we need to do is paste our code. So I'm going to go right here. So if you're copying it from my video, you'll have to manually type it in. Um, so I'll, once again, I'll just show right here. You could pause the video and you can just type this into Visual Studio exactly how it's appearing here. Or if you're using following along using your own prompts, you can just click copy and then paste whatever code it gave you into here. So once we've pasted our code, it's very important that we go up to file and we hit save. And this is just when we do this, it's going to let Unity know like essentially we've it's going to compile that code and so it knows which code to use essentially. It's got some code to work with now. So anytime you make any updates to your code in Visual Studio, you should always save it and before you go back into Unity. All right, so if you're following along, so far we have uh, set up our Unity scene, we've created the player object, and we've attached some code to it. Okay, so before we move on to step three, there's one very important thing that we need to do. We need, we've created our code but we haven't actually attached it to this square, this cube yet. So it, there's a couple ways you can do that. You could either go to add component, search for scripts, and it's, it just takes a little bit longer, or you can simply grab your script, going to the assets and to the scripts folder. You can select your script and just drag it. You have to make sure you have your player object selected, but then you can just drag it right over here into the inspector. And you can see that it's now added the player controller script to our cube. And we can test this out before we move on by going to game view here and then clicking play. So Unity is going to compile a few things. And then once it's done compiling, we can 
move to the left and to the right. And let's see if the off screen method works. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, cool. So our player can move left and right. And if we stop the game here, and with our player object selected, if we scroll down to the player controller script, we see there's this option for speed. So we can adjust our speed, but we'll, we'll mess with that later. But uh, for right now, we'll just leave it at five. All right, so we're gonna go back into ChatGPT here. So now we've set up our Unity project, we've created the player, and we've got him moving, He's, he works, we can control our player. Step three is to create falling objects. 